All right, so this topic that we're going to be discussing today is a little bit controversial on the Saints fan spectrum of things. A lot of people think that this shouldn't even be a conversation. A lot of people think that, you know, um, just this this isn't worth talking about, but I promise you it is, especially considering that the New Orleans Saints only have less than $5 million in cap space heading into the season. Of course, there are some moves that could be made. Two notable ones that I will tell you to track for the rest of the offseason, Janoris J. Jenkins' contract year this year is worth $12 million, and Kiko Alonso, who just tore his ACL, his contract is worth $7 million, so if we release some people, um, you know why. Mickey Loomis is usually a wizard at making cap space, so if we can avoid those things at all costs, because they are both great players, we should do so, but I'm just saying, those are two likely things that I've been seeing flying around Twitter, and that I've thought about that make a lot of sense myself. So, the first thing I would like to say before getting into this video is that yes, it is the off season. So, I would, you know, I would appreciate it if you went into the link in the description and donated to my Patreon page. Any small amount helps so much. Um, yeah, so if you would like to go ahead and do that, feel free. I'm not forcing you, but I will mention it at most of my video at the beginning of most of my videos in the off season because there is not a lot of content to go around here. So, the first quarterback I would like to talk about in this quarterback situation for free agency is Drew Brees. But before I do that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit why this is even a discussion. So, the New Orleans Saints have some questions that we must answer this offseason. I will be making a video covering all of our free agents soon, but for now I would like to focus on the Saints' biggest problem, and that is all three of their free agent quarterbacks. Drew Brees is an unrestricted free agent. Teddy Bridgewater is an unrestricted free agent as well, and Taysom Hill is a restricted free agent. In case you are unaware of the difference, an unrestricted free agent is a player that is free to talk, negotiate, or sign with any team in the NFL at their own will. They have no restrictions to their 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 business whatsoever. A restricted free agent, though, I'm going to read this off my computer because it's a pretty long definition and I don't want to screw anything up. A player that has only three years of experience and will not have a contract with his current team. Any team would have the option to make a contract offer, but the Saints would be able to match slash retain that player with said offer. Do you remember that when the Saints offered Cameron Meredith money and the Bears didn't match it, resulting in Cameron Meredith becoming a New Orleans Saint? Think of that when you think of unrestricted free agents because that's exactly what it is. Uh, Taysom Hill is our player. We can sign him to a contract, but other teams can send in offer sheets, and it's the New Orleans Saints' job to match those to make sure that this player does not go anywhere. So first of all, the first player I'd like to talk about in this situation is, of course, Drew Brees, literally the greatest Saints quarterback and probably the greatest NFL quarterback in history. Of course, he had another lackluster playoff performance, but that doesn't matter. The New Orleans Saints have every attachment to Drew, whether it be financial, a $21 million cap hit, no matter if he signs or not, emotional, or just simple dependence, it's there. A lot of people's opinions of, of Drew are completely skewed at the moment, which is unfair. While missing five games, Drew Brees still through for 2,979 yards, 27 touchdowns, and four interceptions. On top of that, he closed out the regular season with a 15 touchdown to zero interception ratio in the last four games. And a lot of fans seem to forget about that. Now, I feel I would now I would think that Loomis works his usual magic and Drew signs a team-friendly deal, but I can't be certain about that. Drew Brees' last contract was two years. $50 million. I'm hoping we don't have to pay Drew $25 million a year if we do kiss our future goodbye. This, in my opinion, is based entirely on how much Drew wants to play in New Orleans. 100%. He will be offered huge money by other teams. This will test his heart yet again. Will we see Drew Brees take a team-friendly deal with the Saints or leave for the big bucks? We have to see, obviously, but I want Drew Brees back for sure. I know he had that bad performance last week, and I know that he hasn't been the greatest in playoff situations for the past couple of years, but regardless, I want to see Drew Brees back in a Saints uniform. It will not be the same if he isn't. I promise you that. Our offense will no longer 
longer be as per, uh, as perennial as it is right now. It won't be as fast paced. It won't be as intelligent. It won't be as clean, cleanly ran. There will be more turnovers. There's no way without Drew we don't get that eight inner or that eight turnover record for the NFL history. The least amount of turnovers in a season. So, not having Drew Brees. Um, will definitely be a big hit to us. Now, the percentage, I believe, in which we sign Drew Brees is 85%. I think it's pretty likely that the New Orleans Saints ink this man to a new contract just because of how much he means to New Orleans and just because, you know, they know he's a great quarterback and if he wants to play here, there is no way we let this kind of talent just walk because we just don't want to re-sign him that wouldn't make any sense his talent outmeasures everything but with that being said we have more quarterbacks to talk about like i said three are free agents and the next one i'd like to speak about is teddy two gloves teddy bridgewater who the new orleans saints fans have loved and got to know and got to you just straight up adore over the stretch of the season in all honesty though I don't think Teddy Bridgewater is going to stay it's going to take some cap magic to get Breeze signed period so to keep another quarterback that deserves 20 million a year is highly unlikely like I said about Breeze signing Teddy completely depends on the amount of money that Teddy is willing to take unlike Breeze though Teddy is young and has not made endless amounts of money in the NFL like Breeze has a team is going to offer Teddy Bridgewater a ton of money and I doubt he doesn't take it like honestly uh, that I have no problem with he won't be betraying the Saints or whatever you guys else may say about Teddy Bridgewater in this situation he will be furthering his career and pursuing what's best for himself and his family and that's perfectly fine I will forever be grateful for the 5-0 run he took us on even though he probably would have went two and three if the defense wasn't playing as good as what as it was but we won't talk about that now it would be amazing to to get Teddy Bridgewater back but I'm going to be honest with you guys, if Drew Brees returns this season, I don't want Teddy Bridgewater, and that isn't because I don't think he's a fantastic player, and that isn't because I don't think I, I don't want to see him play in New Orleans, this, this he just has too much talent to hold on to. He really does. He can be a starting quarterback in this league, and wasting his career sitting behind Drew Brees is not the best option for him. Someone is going to offer him big money for that 5-0 run he went on, and I won't be surprised if Teddy Bridgewater takes it this time. He won't be getting offered like twelve mil or $8 million like he was against the Dol or, uh, from the Dolphins last year just for him to take like a $1 million less deal with the New Orleans Saints. He's going to get big bucks. So definitely keep an eye on Teddy Bridgewater. I don't think he's going to be a, you know, facet in New Orleans anytime soon. So the last quarterback I would like to talk about, it's obvious, it's our last quarterback I have to talk about, and that is Taysom Hill. Now, Taysom Hill is an interesting free agent uh, player, period. Do you pay him quarterback money, wide receiver money, tight end money, offensive lineman money, kicker money, D lineman money, corner money, linebacker money, special teamer money. I'm joking. Taysom is going to want a quarterback wage for sure, but I don't think teams will be willing to shell out as much as they did or will be for Teddy Bridgewater. Taysom's success is 100% benefited from Sean Payton's system. Like literally, it is 100% Sean Payton's system. He is not guaranteed to work anywhere else unless he's placed at QB where his natural talents can be shown. He's shown the ability to pass the ball very well even in the playoffs, Taysom threw a 50-yard bomb and double coverage to an extremely undersized Deontay Harris. He is a genuinely exciting player that can send a jolting spark throughout the entire offense. He is everything you want at, in a QB and more. Sean Payton does not call him the um, our own Steve Young for no reason. Only problem is he will be turning 30 this offseason. Even though he's in impeccable shape, he's running out of time to get his quarterbacking career started. If the Saints want to hang on to Taysom Hill and not waste his career, they must act soon. If Drew is out, this is the quarterback I want to lead this team. Not only is he a leader, he's a young, excited spirit. He gives off the same vibe Ingram did back in the day while he was on the field. Gotta love the Mormon Missile. Oh, also, something that Taysom said when asked about what position 
position he would like to play in the NFL or what position he loved best in the NFL. He said quarterback, of course, and that's it. So let's make that happen sooner rather than later. Another thing I would like to read to you guys that is pretty interesting about this quarterback here, Taysom Hill caught 19 of 22 targets this season. He had 234 yards receiving, six receiving touchdowns, 15 of 19 catches equaled first downs. He has serious potential at wide receiver and become a seri- it could become a serious threat for the Saints at almost any position he currently plays. Thank you for Go Saints on Instagram for actually typing that out. There is not a position on the offense that he did not line up in this year, not named offensive line, so Taysom Hill definitely is a Swiss Army knife. Do the Saints re-sign him in hopes of him becoming a quarterback in the future, though? That is soon to be told. But honestly, I don't really know what we do here. The only reason I give Taysom Hill the nod being signed over Teddy Bridgewater is because of the fact that Teddy Bridgewater's offers are going to be way more plentiful than Taysom Hill's. Of course, teams want Taysom Hill, but they're not willing to shell out starting quarterback dollars for him, I don't think, even though it would be a smart decision to do so. So I think the Saints re-sign a... Taysom Hill, who has had three career-ending injuries, season-ending injuries in his lifetime, hoping that he has rehabilitated rehabilitated himself completely and can take the starting role further once Drew Brees retires. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. I would greatly appreciate it. I would like to hear your feedback as well. Don't dislike bomb the video just because maybe one of the players isn't where you want them to be. Oh, I forgot. The, the signing percentage for signing Teddy Bridgewater, I put at 50%, and the signing percentage for Taysom Hill, I put at 80%. I wrote those down and completely forgot to tell them. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you boys. Balling like Barkley, wrist so sparkly, internet surfing, feel like I Carly.